No, one shot is not enough. Few more will set the example straight. <laughs> Hey guys, Ali here. Unfortunately, this high adrenaline suspenseful intro ends here. While the hero of that movie goes on with his murdering spree, you, his brilliant sidekick, needs to help him through disaster scenarios and unlock all electronics door for him so he can rescue the girl of your dreams and live. Wait, he gets to live with the girl of your dreams? Never mind him. The important bit is you are brilliant, you are special, and you're gonna set your own examples with few shots in a prompt best to get started so yes turns out you do set examples to teach the model a lesson but you are not making example of the model rather you are providing examples to the model to follow along this is what this pattern is teaching the large language model via examples give it some examples and good responses teaching it what a good output and formatting looks like and hoping it would pick up on the pattern and follow along now, totally depending on the context of usage, the model, for most cases, is pre-trained on many examples, especially if a noun exists for such pattern. An example of that can be a cooking recipe or a diet plan. If you ask one from the large language model, it will respond with the standard norm of a recipe, that is, ingredients followed by steps. For this example, you don't need to train it at all using examples. It is pre-trained. Ask for a great omelette recipe and you would get it structured as it should be with zero examples needed. This is called zero shot prompting. Then comes one shot prompting, where you provide just one example and the model picks up on that. The simplest example can be a prompt like input at one plus one and output the answer to one plus one is two. Now write input colon three plus three in next prompt and see one shot prompting in action with the model responding with the answer to three plus three is six. This is generally helpful if you need output in a custom format and or your example has static and dynamic portions. The model senses how to format the output as per your desired format and follows along. Another example can be of sentiment analysis, where examples like the delivered package turned out to be totally different from the picture and did not fit either, sentiment negative. Followed by the next prompt, I really liked the tie I ordered from your website, sentiment would receive a response positive from the large language model. Yes, finally, we are going to see examples of few shot prompting. But before we go to the example, you might have picked up on the pattern here yourself. The difference between zero, one, and few shots prompting is how much you are trying to leverage existing training of the large language model, starting with total dependence to no dependence on existing training respectively. Let's start with the simplest example. Fruit, banana, taste sweet, fruit lemon taste sour, fruit avocado taste sweet, fruit orange taste sour, and now I prompt it with fruit mango and taste. And most probably you would be rewarded with the answer sweet. Now any further prompts with just statements like above and prefix with fruit colon would be responded with taste colon followed by sweet or sour for the fruit in your input statement. Large language models like ChatGPT would continue to play along in subsequent prompts as they have learned the pattern. Models try to respond with most probable next words. They are learning patterns. Here it learned the pattern using examples you provided to it. If you provide taste colon in the prompt, it is going to skip that in the response and just produce the type as the response. It is pattern following at its best and you can take it forward as per your choosing. This also gives you good insight as to how it learns the language itself, where during its training, it picked up on the repeating patterns in training data and learned to respond accordingly. This is why large language models can speak and translate into languages they are not even explicitly trained on. Here it just did the same with your provided examples, since it is trained to do so by default. Previous example was a really simple one where we just picked up on the taste of the fruit. Let's take it one notch up and try something more interesting. Let's try doing few shots prompting by providing it some situation and then some actions as a response. So situation, there's a short circuit happening in switchboard of the classroom. Action, call the mains control room to cut the power supply off. Ask students to evacuate the classroom. Get the fire extinguisher for electrical fires and try to extinguish the fire. 
ask someone to call 588. Situation 2. Student gets injured during soccer practice. And action. Immediately call the in-house doctor to assess the injury. After consulting with the doctor, give parents a call for their consent if some medication needs to be administered. And if the doctor advises so, ask them to come and pick their kid from school. Now we prompt with situation, classes in progress, and an earthquake hits. Action. With this example, we are asking the large language model to provide action to take in the given situation. We have provided a few short examples of various crisis situations at school and actions that best handle the situation as per your school's crisis management plan. Now you present it with a unique situation and ask for action. Now it should come up with an intelligent, insightful action plan formatted as a bulleted list like the examples you provided. But the important bit is, it is going to tap into this training to come up with a brilliant answer. Now using few short examples, you can either come up with a very detailed what ifs analysis per situation or just a few lines plan, or for some other examples, a verb or short actionable statements. It would use its knowledge to answer, but would look up to your examples to format the output as well and decide how detailed the output needs to be. Do admire the helpfulness of large language model and patterns like few short examples to come up with plans like above, which is a big advantage of this pattern in particular. Right, the fun doesn't just end here. Combining your few short examples with generative AI capability of language model gives it very interesting ability, that is to expand on the examples you have been providing. This is useful to perform a great what-if analysis of the situation, where you have provided it examples of actions taken in certain situations, and then expand on your examples with help of language model to generate data on situations, as well as actions required to be taken in such situations. Let's say after providing a few examples like the situation action prompts earlier, now if you're instructed to generate more examples followed by a situation colon, it is going to generate a bunch of unique situations for the given context, that is crisis situations faced in school, formatted according to your example data, and provide actions to take in such situations in the same breath, also customized as per your examples. This can be creatively used in a ton of situations where you want to generate statistical filler data or how to generate broader descriptions or creating questions for your students in a class or use it in an, a lot of content generation, crisis management, or other kind of planning scenarios. If you are, say, tasked with creating crisis management plan for school and you are trying to decide action items in your team for certain situations, few short examples is a great way to generate a crisis response policy document. The technique works because the tool already knows how to produce the next series of words, so it is ready to pick up on the pattern that you are providing and start generating output in the format and structure that you want it to. It also has gone over loads of FAQs, policy documents, manuals, to-do lists, scripts, etc. as part of its training, and hence is ready to contribute to your few examples with a rich, meaningful output. Few short examples need not be limited to question or answer or situation in action. They can be expanded to incorporate intermediate steps to break down the problem at hand into step-by-step -step instructions or add statements that clarify the decision-making process that would lead to the next step. Few short examples are kind of a script to generate future content with, and ChatGPT follows the script brilliantly, filling it with its own novel content, but keeping the original formatting and structure of the conversation intact. A non-language model example would be, let's say, Mission Impossible movie series where the script for later editions seems to have been generated using a large language model using few short examples of earlier movies. Apologies to those who haven't followed that very popular series, but for those who did, they would totally get what I am saying here. The pattern works best if we keep the template short and to the point, or in other words, less confusing. Short, straightforward, simple examples work best since there is a less chance of confusion and the language model can quickly pick up on the important bits of aspect you are trying to give weightage to. The beauty of this pattern is that you don't have to finger hold the large language model. In fact, you can give it a few examples and then tap into the immense knowledge base to expand on the topic, learning something while teaching it. It would pick up on the semantics of your examples and add valuable info on top of it. Most of the times, you just need to focus on using examples to keep its output formatted in a certain way, while it starts picking up on the context of these examples itself and keeps expanding it further.
we have seen examples where few short examples worked brilliantly, but I also came across a very interesting example where few short prompting totally fails. Let's see, we say input brick, output hard, input pillow, output soft, input car, output. Now, what do you expect the output to be? Well, be ready to be disappointed if you were expecting hard, as it is going to say fast. Why? because it picked up on the defining attribute of the input. It would produce hard or soft if you instruct it to confine its output to be those two words. But see, examples can convey totally different meaning than the one you were thinking about. Here, car is not generally associated with hard or soft, while brick and pillow are. So it tried to reason that we are trying to output the most defining aspect of the input, and hence it generated fast. Examples need to have good context and detail, and this helps it figure out how it needs to think of the examples. The prefixes and formatting you specify in examples needs to be meaningful and give additional context to the model to work with. The pattern never stops you or asks you to start with the example directly. You are free to specify the rules and end goal in the initial prompt, telling the model what your end goal in mind is. This is especially true if the examples are vague and rules might be hard to extract from the limited set of examples you're providing. The model would reason similar to how humans do. So if some examples can confuse certain humans, they can confuse the model as well. You may need to test and fine tune the output if it deviates from your intended trajectory, just like it did in our example. You should get it right within a few iterations. You can check out iterative prompting video on the channel to learn more about that technique. This is it for a somewhat lengthy video on few shots prompting. Please like and share if you found it useful and subscribe to be notified of other videos like this one on the channel. Thank you.